Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In the early 2000s, the US Navy identified a critical gap in its ability to operate effectively in shallow, near shore waters, known as the littorals. Traditional warships were too large, deep drafted, and expensive to risk in these environments, especially in contested zones near coastlines. To address this, the Navy launched the littoral combat ship LCS, aiming to build a fast, agile, and modular vessel capable of operating in waters where destroyers and cruisers couldn't safely maneuver. The LCS was designed with interchangeable mission modules, allowing it to rapidly switch between surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and mine countermeasures. These ships are optimized for speed, stealth, and close-to-shore operations, offering flexibility in responding to asymmetric threats like small attack boats, mines, and diesel submarines. Their shallow draft and high speed, up to 40 knots, enable them to respond quickly in dynamic environments, including archipelagic waters and congested maritime zones. Although the program has faced criticism and revision, the need for a cost-effective, deployable littoral platform remains central to countering emerging threats from regional powers and irregular maritime forces. The LCS reflects the Navy's shift toward distributed maritime operations in the 21st century. Designed to operate in near-shore environments, the littoral combat ships consist of two small surface-class vessels capable of defeating asymmetric threats in the littoral. These two vessels, the Freedom Variant and the Independence Variant, were designed and built by two industry teams. Lockheed Martin was in charge of building the steel monohull Freedom, while General Dynamics Bath Ironworks created the aluminum design of the Independence. LCS ships are designed for high speed and agility, making them ideal to respond quickly to threats near shallow waters. Also, the ship's design made it possible to reconfigure it for various roles by changing the mission module equipment, like weapon systems or sensors. This versatility has led to the deployment of LCS ships to several areas of strategic interest in the United States and worldwide. This is showcased with the 5th Fleet operations to the Middle East in 2022 being the first time a littoral combat ship has operated with such a fleet. LCS adaptability is put to the test with the use of its flight deck for flight operations, capable of accommodating multiple helicopters. This area is over one and a half times bigger than traditional surface combatants, making it possible to launch aircraft of various sizes. Usually, its hangar bay is equipped with one or two MH-60 helicopters and UAV MQ-8 Fire Scout. 
This ability to support helicopters and UAVs enhances the LCS's mission flexibility, allowing it to perform various tasks, including intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. However, more than just intelligence missions, the LCS is fully prepared to engage in offensive operations and equipped with high-tech weaponry. This includes the naval strike missiles designed to engage and destroy surface targets at long ranges with high precision. Its effectiveness has been proved in several exercises, like the Pacific Griffin near Guam. This arsenal also includes the Ceron launcher, which was designed to offer improved ship self-defense. Using independent sensors derived from the Phalanx CIWS greatly enhances the guidance capabilities of the RAM missile. With the LCS modular mission packages, this weapon system can be easily accommodated in the vessel, considering the space, weight, and power requirements of such a tool. Besides missile launching systems, the LCS can integrate weapons like the MK110 Mod 057mm gun mount, serving as a multi-purpose, medium caliber gun. By firing up to 220 rounds per minute, this gun is effective against threats like small boats, patrol vessels, and other small surface vehicles. It was demonstrated that the high speed, powerful capabilities of this system during the combat systems ship qualifications trials in the Pacific Ocean. This shows all the capacity an LCS can have, with its long list of weaponry making it deadly and unique. Complementing LCS operations, the common unmanned surface vessel is an uncrewed surface vessel designed for mine countermeasures, surface warfare, and intelligence operations. This vessel can be launched from ports, well decks, LCS configurations, and other vessels of opportunity. It is designed to match the weight and handling limits of a conventional rigid hulled inflatable boat. It has a modular architecture that allows it to be easily reconfigured depending on the mission requirements. Inside the USV family, the Mantis T-38 Devil Ray was specifically engineered for inshore environments, including shallow coastal waters. It is based on a high-performance dual-sponson platform known for its stability and powertrain, giving it high burst speeds ranging from 70 to 100 knots. This design is also responsible for its capability to access areas inaccessible to larger vessels, providing unique capabilities for surveillance and reconnaissance in seaside areas. USVS play a crucial role in current naval operations by offering unique capabilities in solving various challenges. Their design focuses on having a low profile, with reduced acoustic and electromagnetic signatures, making them perfect surveillance tools without alerting potential threats. Most of them are based on modular construction, allowing for variation of their payloads and making them adaptable to different mine threat environments. Their communication and control systems use an array of sensors, ranging from radar to acoustic receivers, and are built to be redundant to reduce failure. All those capabilities are shown and constantly tested during the military exercises done worldwide, including the rim of the Pacific. 
This offered a unique opportunity to fully extract the potential of the newly developed vessels while sustaining cooperative relationships among the participants. Threats can arise from every direction, whether from the sea, the air, or beneath the surface via submarines. To confront these dangers, advanced warships such as destroyers have been designed to dominate across all operational environments. These vessels are widely regarded as the global standard for surface combat ships, celebrated for their speed, resilience, and firepower. Their exceptional performance comes from sophisticated engineering and cutting-edge technology. As a result, constructing one is a highly complex process that can take up to two years, requiring careful coordination of both materials and workforce. The duration of construction also varies depending on the destroyer's class, with the Zumwalt and Arleigh Burke being two of the most notable examples. Both have served as critical assets for the U.S. Navy and Allied fleets. While the Arleigh Burke has been in service longer, each reflects decades of progress in producing increasingly capable warships. Modern versions are larger and more stable than their predecessors, yet even these advanced ships can be challenged by heavy seas. Factors such as hull shape, weight distribution, and construction materials determine how well they endure rough waters. Still, the ship's constant motion is something the crew quickly adapts to as part of daily life aboard one of the Navy's most actively deployed vessels. Life at sea aboard a destroyer is anything but routine. The ship's compact environment fosters strong camaraderie, where each sailor understands their own duties as well as those of others. This culture encourages a state of readiness, with even junior crew members stepping up when required. While the Arleigh Burke continues to be a cornerstone of U.S. naval strength, its long years of service have prompted the introduction of the Zumwalt class. Developed in the 2010s, this new class was built for shore bombardment, coastal operations, and addressing emerging challenges. Although the Zumwalt offers a glimpse into the next era of naval warfare, its high cost ensures the Arleigh Burke remains indispensable for now. Its proven adaptability and enduring reliability secure its place as a key element of naval power. The Zumwalt was originally built around its advanced gun systems, intended to launch long-range land attack projectiles. However, escalating costs resulted in these being replaced with new hypersonic missile systems. Its total ship computing environment infrastructure enables the integration of future technologies. While 32 Zumwalts were initially planned, the program delivered only three due to expense. These vessels incorporate advanced design features such as a tumble home hull for enhanced stealth and wave piercing performance. along with a deck house constructed from composite materials like carbon fiber. Northrop Grumman and General Dynamics Bath Iron Works partnered on the project, 
using flat panel construction to reduce tooling costs. Beneath the surface, the Zoomwalt runs on an integrated power system that produces 78 megawatts enough to power all systems on board, from propulsion to advanced weapons. Following system integration and trials, the ship is formally christened and commissioned for service. Officers and crew of the USS Michael Monsoor man our ship and bring her to life. Once operational, the Zumwalt functions with exceptional efficiency. Bridge crews manage precise navigation, while engineering, intelligence, and surveillance units oversee critical systems. Every crew member contributes to maximizing the vessel's performance and readiness. Destroyers continue to be vital assets in maintaining maritime superiority. As navies continue to modernize and challenge emerging threats, the importance of limited but advanced ships and surface vessels keeps increasing. This is why the emergence of ships like destroyers, LCS, and USV will be more and more frequent. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.